We are now at the Santa Barbara Harbor and the reason why we are in this location is because we will be interviewing Kira Redmond. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? She is uh, Executive Director of the Santa Barbara Channel Keeper, an organization that deals with water. Uh, Kira, you better than anyone else to tell us about the mission of this organization. Sure. Santa Barbara Channel Keeper is a local grassroots nonprofit organization that's dedicated to protecting and restoring the Santa Barbara Channel and its watersheds. We were formed in 1999 as a program of the Environmental Defense Center and then became an independent nonprofit in 2002. And Channel Keeper works on the water and in the community to advocate for clean water, monitor water quality, restore aquatic ecosystems, enforce environmental laws, and engage citizens in identifying and devising solutions to water pollution problems in our community. A lot of things going on with your organization. Why don't we meet a couple of your uh, team members okay. and ask them a few questions. Let's go. And now we are with Ben Peterly. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Ben, repeat me. You are director of which program? I'm the director of watershed programs. Now tell me, how do you monitor the quality of water in our area? Uh, well, one of the main programs I'm involved in is our stream team program. Uh, stream team is a volunteer water quality monitoring program, so we train volunteers. Uh, we meet once a month and we collect water quality data from the streams and rivers that drain into our local beaches. Our program has three goals. Uh, the first um, is just to collect a baseline of water quality information so that over time we can tell if water quality is improving or, or worsening. Um, second, we, you know, we train and we educate volunteers so that hopefully they, we can help them to become uh, watershed or stewards of these creeks and rivers. And then third, we use our information to help us um, identify pollution problems. Um, and in the past, uh, we've identified multiple pollution sources. Uh, just this last year, actually, we used our information to help identify a pipe that was discharging uh, raw sewage into one of the creeks. And we worked with the city of Santa Barbara. Uh, I think since the beginning, um, we started our program stream team in 2001, and since then, um, over 750 people have participated. Um, anything for anywhere from uh, younger students to uh, retirees. So it's been a great way to reach out to the local community and get them involved in our work. The other main way that we're monitoring water quality right now, um, this last year, that um, Santa Barbara County eliminated their funding for the beach monitoring that they used to be doing on a weekly basis and uh, Channel Keeper stepped in and we've taken over that monitoring throughout the winter. So since November we've actually been collecting um, beach data for indicator bacteria um, every week and we've been providing that information to the public. Thank you very much. That's excellent. And here to my right is Jesse Alstad. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. Now, I know you are part of the Marine Habitat effort. Can you tell us more about this uh, program? Um, yeah, sure. Um, Channel Keepers found that it's really important to measure what's kind of at the end of the pipe out in our oceans in addition to the water quality on shore. And so one of the ways we've been doing this is to look at a really important and critical marine habitats such as kelp beds and eelgrass beds both along our coast and out at the islands. And re um, recently we've been focusing on eelgrass beds because these are really sensitive habitats that are easily impacted by human activities such as dredging and construction. And as we've also found too, anchoring can severely damage eelgrass beds as well. This habitat is really important for a, whole, a really large variety of fish and invertebrates that use it for spawning habitat and for juvenile habitat and for food and for shelter. In 2002, we started an actual eelgrass restoration project at Anacapa Island. There had been eelgrass historically found around Anacapa as there is right now at Santa Cruz and Santa Rosa Islands, but there was a big population boom of white sea urchins back in the 80s, and then after the, their populations normaled out, the eelgrass just never came back. So we undertook a small restoration project at East Anacapa using plants that we transplanted there from Santa Cruz Island. And over the past five years, we've had dozens of volunteers who've spent thousands of hours helping us kind of do underwater gardening, essentially, at this site. And just in the last year alone, in 2007, the area of eelgrass has spread by over, I think, 250 percent. So we're now seeing um, the seagrass um, a range of up to about half a mile away from where we started. So it's been a really good success. 
Definitely. That's such a good program. And I'm so glad that somebody is taking care of that because <laughs> that's, you know, something that nobody really knows what's going on underneath. But, well, thank you. We'll talk more with our director, Kira Redmond, and uh, we'll ask her about education and other topics. We are back with Kira Redmond. Kira, I would like to ask you about the advocacy program. Sure. Um, Channel Keeper is a watchdog organization, so we testify regularly be before local and regional government bodies to get them to, to advocate for them to enforce the existing laws that we have that protect water quality and to enact stronger ones when they're needed. Good for you and your organization. Now let's talk about education, which I know you also cover. How do you educate people about the importance of protecting the water? Sure. One of Channel Keeper's major tools that we use to, to achieve our mission is to educate people, especially the younger generation, about water quality and what they can do to, to protect it. We work diligently to instill a sense of environmental stewardship, especially in young people, through our education programs. And since 2002, we've actually been implementing a marine science education curriculum in junior high and high schools throughout Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. And then a couple of years ago, we also partnered with the Ty Warner Sea Center to deliver a watershed awareness program to um, younger students, teaching them to make the connection between human activities in their watershed and the creeks and the marine life in the Santa Barbara Channel. And through those two programs alone, we've actually reached 11,000 students over the past few years. And our, again, our goal is to really make sure that we're fostering a new generation of people who will carry on our important work to protect and restore the channel and its watersheds. One thing that I'd like to add is what makes Channel Keeper unique is that we approach water quality issues in our community from all sides by not only using science and education and advocacy to secure stronger protections for water quality, but also getting out in the field and conducting water quality monitoring to see where the pollution sources are and to get them to be cleaned up and to measure progress about how we're doing to clean up those water quality problems and also um, conducting restoration and cleanups to restore aquatic ecosystems that are already degraded. Could you provide us with your website and phone number in case people need more information? Sure, our website is www.sbck.org and our phone number is 805-563-3377. Well, thank you, Kira, and I wish the best for you and your organization. Thanks very much. For more information on the Nonprofit Spotlight, check our website at www.sbchannels.tv or call 963-3893. If you'd like your nonprofit featured in a future Nonprofit Spotlight, contact us at the information on your screen.